evening, everyone. How are you doing? This is the Fulton County Library System live story time for Thursday, July 15th. How's everybody doing? My name is Alan. I am with the Roswell Library, and I am doing story time with you today. Um, I've been working for the library system for about five years now, and I'm currently at the Roswell branch. And I am a, I'm an author and a musician, and I've got two books selected today all about music. So that's going to be fun. Um, I'm a musician. I've um, played drums and percussion. I started actually when I was a little kid playing piano, and then I picked up drums and percussion, and I've, that's what I mainly do. I have played with rock bands, jazz bands, folk groups, um, orchestras, operas. I've done all kinds of things. So I love music. I play drums everywhere I go. When I'm sitting at my desk here at work, I play drums. When I'm driving my car, I play drums on my steering wheel. It's really insane. So anyway, I've got a couple of books that I've picked out for you that I hope that you will enjoy. The first one is called one Bear Extraordinaire by Jamie McGowan. And um, this is about um, basically picking up musicians and forming a band. And had I known, I've, I've started many, many bands in my time, and had I known that um, bands, you could just put them together by walking through the forest, I would have done that for years. And I want to point out um, the artwork on this book. Um, Jamie McGowan wrote this book and she also illustrated it and she did it in a really, really cool way. Um, if you can see here, what she did was she made all the pictures by cutting out each individual shape and gluing them together. Isn't that cool? So that means that you can make your own picture book. Uh, you can draw, you can paint, or you can cut out shapes and make a picture by layering your shapes. So let's dive into one Bear Extraordinaire by Jamie McGowan. Okay, you ready? <clears throat> Library of Congress cataloging and publication. Oh, wait, you don't want to hear that part. Sorry. Okay. So here we are with the actual story. Now, this is my first time doing story time. So if I mess up a little bit, just forgive me. Okay. And if you guys are musicians too, if you have taken piano lessons or if you have started in uh, your school band or something, make a little comment and let us know. Let us know what you play. Let us know what your favorite song is. Okay, so we're gonna jump in. So this is, once again, One Bear Extraordinaire. All right, let me see if I can angle this where you can see the pictures a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> Bear woke up one morning with a song in his head. But of course, Bear always woke up with a song in his head. Ah, how am I going to get the picture on the thing? Okay. Bear was a rambling musician, an entertainer, a legend, one bear extraordinaire. He was known across the wilderness for his nimble paws, his sweet harmonies, and twinkle toed grace. But today, as Bear tried to play this particular song, it didn't make the forest dance the way he expected it to. His song drooped, wilted in midair, and crashed to the ground. Something is missing, he thought. I don't know what it is. But I'm going to find out, and he sets off on a little journey. Bear looked high. Bear looked low. He whistled for his song, he called out, and a banjo answered. Bear, where are you headed? asked Fox. Just going where the music takes me, Bear replied. There's something I'm trying to find. May I come along? asked Fox. Bear looked at the road ahead, and then he looked at Fox. Sure, why not? he answered. So they walked and they wandered on and on down past the thicket where they heard an accordion through the ferns. Where are you going? asked a raccoon. 
wherever the tune leads us, Bear replied. May I join you? asked Raccoon. Bear nodded. And so they trekked and they tramped on and on into the valley where they heard a fiddle on the wind. Where are you off to? asked Rabbit. Bear gestured down the trail. This way, I think. Mind if I tag along? asked Rabbit. Follow us, Bear replied. They foot slogged and frolicked on and on through the woods where they heard a rustling from behind. You can see his little lineup of musicians. And wait, there's one extra one. It's Wolf Pup. Hey, Wolf Pup cleared his throat. What about me, Bear? I want to be a musician. What can I play? Hmm, I don't know if we need another instrument, said Bear, but I suppose everyone's got something to add. Here you go, pup. Try one of these. And he dumps out his big bag of stuff. He's got a cowbell and a guitar and bells and a tambourine and, I mean, a chocolate bar and honey graham crackers. That doesn't sound very musical to me. <clears throat> but Wolf Pup tried them all. Wolf Pup drummed to a different beat. He shook a strange, strange song. He chewed a mysterious melody only he could hear. He strummed an unusual sound. And here's the other ones just like kind of looking like what is going on. Well, all that's left now is the kazoo, said Bear. It might be just the thing for you, little tyke. Anyone can play it. <clears throat> the travelers reached a clearing on the mountain just as the sun was setting. Bear built a campfire while the others tuned their instruments. <clears throat> as the moon came out, Bear picked his guitar. Fox plucked his banjo. Raccoon squeezed his accordion. Rabbit bowed his fiddle. The campfire popped and crackled. That sounds pretty good, said Bear to himself, but something is still missing. All of a sudden, ow! Out came a sound so wild and wondrous, the entire forest jumped up to listen. That's it. That's what this song needed all along. We've got ourselves a singer, Bear said. He watched the music swirl and hover over the ridge, echo through the canyon, and fill the sky as he and his wayfaring band whooped and hollered their song to the stars and the tune sounded just right. That night, Bear fell asleep with a song in his head and a band by his side. There you go. Bear found a band and he found the missing element to his music, singing. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, once again, that was Bear, One Bear Extraordinaire by Jamie McGowan. Uh, definitely look for this book and really pay attention to the artwork in there that she created um, by cutting out different shapes and layering them. I think it's really, really cool the way she did that. Our next book is Never Play Music Right Next to the Zoo by John Lithgow. Now, Mr. Lithgow has written quite a few picture books in his time. Look at all those picture books that he's written. Um, but he's really most famous for being an actor. Um, he's done lots and lots and lots of movies and television shows. Uh, so you may recognize him from there. Um, if you've never seen some movies like, um, have your parents uh, show you Harry and the Hendersons sometime. It's pretty, pretty awesome. It's about Bigfoot. Okay, so this is called, once again, Never Play Music Right Next to the Zoo. And this is about animals. I love music, I love animals, so perfect book. Okay, let's jump in. I cannot get this book 
angled where you can see it very well. Okay. I went to a concert when I was a lad, no older than many of you. I sat with my sister, my mother, my dad at a band shell right next to the zoo. So here they are, all off to the orchestra concert. <clears throat> the soft summer air was so balmy and sweet, and the program was running so long that I found myself falling asleep in my seat despite all the music and song. All at once the conductor erupted with rage. A band of wild animals was storming the stage. Here, look at this, that's awesome. Oh children, remember whatever you may do, never play music right next to the zoo. They'll burst from their cages, each beast and each bird, des desperate to play all the music they've heard. The lions and the elephants, the bears and the raccoons will steal away the trumpets, the flutes, and the bassoons. She's trying to fight off a bear with her music stand. Replace the musicians and chase them away and they'll sit in the band shell and they'll play. The monkeys played fiddle, the bison played bass, the percussions were manned by the camel. The yak played sax until red in the face, a surprisingly musical mammal. The bonobo played oboe, the ferret, the flute. The jackal attacked the bassoon. The hippo had chosen the tuba to toot by the light of the silvery moon. Siberian tigers, Mongolian goats, a super abundance of bestial notes. As the animal orchestra filled up the air with chaos, confusion, and clatter, the audience calmly continued to stare as if nothing at all was the matter. I trembled with terror, suppressing a scream, while my parents just sat there enraptured. Oh, how I wish it was only a dream, all those creatures all safely recaptured. But since, by the minute, I'd grown less afraid, I decided to sit back and watch while they played. He's got a snake wrapped around his neck. So here's the big concert scene where the audience is listening to all the animals perform. By the way, I should mention that the art in this book is done by Lisa Hernandez. That was, that was silly of me to omit that information earlier. Okay, they finished and each put his instrument down, then bowed and descended the stage. Each shed his tuxedo or evening gown and hurried back home to his cage. Then each reminisced, so grateful and glad, so full of contentment and pride. My mother, meanwhile, strolled away with my dad, but my sister remained by my side. See, he's asleep. I think he dreamed the whole thing. She tugged on my sweater and spoke in my ear. You'd better wake up or we're leaving you here. No oh, children remember, whatever you may do, never play music right next to the zoo. They'll burst from their cages, each beast and each bird, desperate to play all the music they've heard. No, never play music next to the zoo and pay strict attention to rule number two. Bear it in mind for the rest of your days. Don't fall asleep when an orchestra plays. There you go. Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you had a great time. 
do not forget to uh, do your summer reading. Um, if you will go on to our website, which is fullcolibrary.com, I mean .org, sorry, fullcolibrary.org, there is a link on the right-hand side uh, that says register for summer reading, and that'll take you to a site called Beanstack. And that's where you can, if you haven't already registered, you can sign up for it and you can keep a track of all the books that you've read and you can count these two in your list. So have a great afternoon, take care, have a fun summer, do your summer reading, and we'll see you tomorrow for another live story time. Take care. <laughs>